Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so I decided to jo jump on and do a live because um, I got a couple of questions from somebody who's new to the carnivore way of eating and has some questions about weight loss. So I thought it would be a good idea to just invite her on and answer some questions because I think this is useful, useful information for everybody. So hang on. on in a second um and uh we'll go from there you can hi hey how you doing good how are you good so um hold on one second i realized i didn't turn off my other speaker you're coming out of the wrong place okay okay all right now so can you hear me yes can you hear me? yes okay, great. yes i can all right. Hi. How you doing? Oh, hi, Wrangler. It's good to see you. Um, the functional oncologist, um, Francis Joy Group. Hey, how you doing? So um, I'm excited here to be here today and talk to, um, what is your handle, Cute Lady? Well, what is your real name? <laughs> or what do you want me to call I'm, you besides Cute Lady? My real name is Claudette. My real Claudette. name is Claudette. Yes. Okay. And I'm a day. So I'm um, Claudette asked some questions about losing weight on a carnivore diet. And I thought that would be really helpful for everybody to know. So let's, uh, let's dive in and have a little bit of a conversation. So uh, what, what would you say are, um, what's your first question, Claudette? Well, I guess for me, I've been hearing people say that they're losing weight on it. And I, I get the benefits of being on carnivore that my inflammation has gone down a lot. I feel a lot better. My mind is clearer, mm -hmm. but I'm just doing the weight loss. Yeah. And for me, I need the weight loss. And but I haven't given up. Mm -hmm. That I because of the way I feel, I refuse to give up doing it. Yeah. It's just that I just seem to can't figure out how to get the weight loss part of it. Yeah. Along because that will definitely help me with everything else too. Okay. Okay. So, um, listen, your connection seems to be a little bit unstable. So I'm hearing um, some uh, static. Um, so I'm not sure where you are in your house. And honestly, I love your earrings, but I think I hear them clicking together. Is that possible? Or are they one piece? They're just one piece. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's, I think it's probably my, it's probably where I am. And it's real windy here. Oh, okay. All it's right. real windy here. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, we, we can hear you best. But I love those earrings. They're really cute. Um, Thank you. So, uh, well, so first I would say, um, you know, we can dive into what you're actually eating and make sure that there aren't things that, you know, uh, you know, maybe need some tweaking there. But I would say that for me um, and a lot of the people I see, especially people who maybe have been overweight a long time and who are older and potentially have some metabolic diseases, go uh, metabolic issues or disease going on, um, weight loss is not the first thing that happens. So, um. yeah. <laughs> Um, so there's, you know, so there's a lot of, of healing that maybe needs to happen. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, your, your body maybe has, um, been struggling with disease and, and other things that are, um, weakening it for years, decades. So when you remove those things, there's a lot of, you know, healing and repair and stuff that's going on. And that's great. You know, your body's going to prioritize the things that need to get done as quickly as possible. Um, and it may, weight may not be that thing. So um, you have to have, I think that you need to have a couple of different measures of, um, you know, what success looks like. So, uh, you know, are you, you know, is your A1C coming down? Is your, you know, blood pressure getting improved? Um, do you feel like you're sleeping better? Is your mood better? Do you have more energy? Do you, is the inflammation coming down? You know, do you have less aches and pains? You're going to have to use those things as, as a measure of, you know, where you are. So what would you say to that? What do you think? That is probably the main reason why I haven't stopped is because um, my A1C is down. I never really had problems with my blood pressure anyway. But it's the way my body feels when it comes to inflammation and 
it just feels so much better. And I can tell the difference when I eat off of the plan. If I eat off of the plan, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. When I get out, like I get out of the bed now and I feel so much better, I can get up instead of sitting there for 10, 15 minutes <laughs> trying to get it together. You know, and I guess this is the longest I can say I've stuck to something. Mm -hmm. because I feel good. Mm -hmm. I just say, well, okay, maybe it's something I need to do, but I refuse to stop. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I have tried to incorporate fasting, and um, I think I need to do more of that, but I also think I need to do it correctly. Well, like, how long have you been eating carnivore? Well, I went from keto to carnivore. I start. I started last year trying to do some carnivore, but I did more. I was doing more keto. This year, starting in January, I started doing more carnivore. Just, so now it's, I'm. It's pretty much just carnivore now. So and uh, well, when was the last time that you would say like you had you know let's say something from the the plant kingdom? When was the last time? Probably a few weeks ago, and that was probably vegetables. It was vegetables because it was celebrating my birthday. That's what it was, celebrating my birthday. And my, my son cooked for me. Happy birthday to you. Belated. So he has, when he cooks, he cooks vegetables because he cooks them for himself. So usually I'll eat what he cooked. And it's. it's... Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No problem. Usually you'll eat what. Like, Vegetables, vegetables is used, and that was probably that was probably a couple that was a couple weeks ago. Okay, so you know the thing is, um, you know that's not very long, right? So even if it's four months, I, it, it takes time to heal and um, and to see like a lot of physical improvement. I, you know, honestly, I would say that I. Um, I was just talking about this with somebody else that I don't feel I hit. I, I only started to peak in terms of the healing by six months. And even now at two and a half years out, I'm still seeing improvements. So, um, so you're just at the very beginning of all the right. benefits that you're going to see. So I, I feel like sometimes with, with eating a carnivore way, you have to be a little bit patient you know, and that's, uh, that's hard. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it, it, it is hard in the fact that my, I have really bad um, feet and like I was supposed to be getting surgery, but with everything that's going on and stuff, I'm staying out of the hospital. I said, we're good till all over. But it's like, I can't really exercise like I'm going to exercise either. Mm -hmm. So well, I need the weight to come off so that I can exercise better. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm trying to just, just, I am trying to be patient. And I think I've done really well because I'm like, usually by now I would have given up and gone to something else. But I like the way I feel. So yeah. I'm really trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it going. And are you measuring um, your body? Like, do you have a tape measure? Do you have any clothes that are not stretchy that well, you can wear, try on? And you know what? I have, I have to say, yes. I, I know I have lost inches. I have definitely lost inches. I have um, a friend of mine made me waist beads. Mm -hmm. And one set of the waist beads. Actually, I tried it on and it fell off. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, you know, I know I'm losing. I know I'm losing inches. It's just not showing on the scale." And for anybody who's watching, let me just say: so waist beads are like, especially in um, you, you might see them in in various African cultures where people it's like a necklace, but it goes around your waist, and um, it can. Some people use them as like a judge to. Um, see, so you, you know, whether they're gaining weight or not, because of course, you know, if you gain weight, like it's going to get tight. 
And, um, and so that can be a great, uh, it's, it's both, um, you know, stylish, but it can also be an indicator of your size. So you say your waist beads are getting so big, they're falling off. One of, like, the girl made me three, three different waist beads to go around my waist. One that just sort of hung sort of pretty much, but the one that hung actually just fell off my body. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I said, well, okay. When it comes to measuring that, it's definitely a lot. I definitely hear that, see that. So, okay. So um, you're, you're saying that on the scale, the number has not changed, but you are losing inches. Right. So why don't you think that you're progressing and losing weight? Because I guess because I need the, I guess because I need the steel. To show. <laughs> now that you say it. <laughs> well, I, you know, the thing that I always say to people is only you see that number on the scale, but everybody can see exactly how tight your pants are. So if you are losing inches, everyone can see that. So who cares what the scale says? Right? This is true. <laughs> okay. And when you lose weight, we, we don't, we only want to lose, we say you lose weight, but what we really want is to lose fat. You know, you can cut off your foot and you'll weigh less on the scale, but that's not helpful to you. So right. the thing with carnivore is, you know, um, very often we come from a diet of deprivation and uh, we are not eating nutrient dense foods. We're not, you know, we're not we're not feeding ourselves properly. So when you start feeding yourself properly, your body, like I told you, is is healing and fixing stuff that it's needed to do for a long time. And some of those things weigh stuff. You know, there's a connective tissue, there's tendons, there's ligaments, there's muscle, there's your organs. Um, all of these things weigh things. So you might weigh more or say the same because you're losing fat, gaining muscle, you know, developing stronger tendons and ligaments and all of that. And so you look different, you've got body composition difference, but you might not see that difference on the scale. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Because okay. I do admit, like, I, I can, now that you've said it, you know, it's like, well, yeah, okay, I see I look in the mirror and I see that my, my neck is getting thinner, you know, this thing, yes. you know, but it's like, why doesn't it show on this day? <laughs> right. So, okay. Yeah. 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 Right. And the other thing that I wanted to ask, um, uh, oh, it just went out of my brain. Uh, well, I don't know. So... <laughs> But I'm glad that you're you're feeling better because that's really the most important thing. Um, e e oh, I know what I was going to ask. So um, you you started talking about fasting. Have you been fasting, or what what's what have you been doing? I've been I've been fasting, and I like I like the I I like fasting, but I'm not sure if I'll fast for like 48 hours. But then I think. I need to eat more on the day that I do. I think I'm not eating enough. I'm trying, and I need to decide whether I should be doing fasting and OMAD or how I should be fasting to see the best benefit from it. Yeah. Because I know that I do benefit from fasting. So, you know, I'm really of two minds about fasting. There's a lot of research about it that suggests it's really healthy and good for you and can bring about a lot of results. Um, but I'm not 100% I'm not clear that um, those results that, that come with fasting, you know, aren't in part just you having an opportunity to remove foods that are irritating to you. And so when you eat carnivore, you might be getting the effects of fasting without actually having to fast. That's, that's an argument that people make. Um, yeah. If you go on Reddit, some of the zero carb um, subreddit, it, that's a great place to go for answers. You've got people there who've been doing eating this way for 10, 15 years. So they are very staunchly anti-fasting, but there are other people who are um, like to combine fasting with carnivore. So it's up to you to do your research and kind of try it out and figure it out.
I, you know, I would say, I think, especially in the very beginning, while you're just getting your feet wet with a carnivore, and I think, you know, six months, a year, like, that's still beginner carnivore, um, you know, maybe it's best not to fast, because, um, you know, the, the, the meat that we're eating is actually raw materials to rebuild neurotransmitters, you know, rebuild your cells, rebuild your muscles, like, you need all that stuff to fix what we've been doing for a long time. So, you know, your fasting is actually kind of denying that. And fasting, the benefits of fasting come from um, not only, you know, the not eating part, but the eating part, because, you know, fasting clears out stuff, but then you need to eat the raw materials to rebuild what you cleared out. So right. it, it is important if you're going to fast, it is really important that you eat enough on those days that you not fast. Um, and then you pay attention to the signals that you're fasting too much. So right. that might be being tired, being irritable. And, you know, and I think that there is like an absolute limit to how much food that we can eat. So if you fast one day and the next day you got to eat more, you know, I don't know if you can eat enough more to offset that period of fasting. I, I don't know, you know, so mm -hmm. I've done, you know, periods of a lot of fasting and periods of not fasting. Right now I've decided because the world is so crazy and it's very stressful, I don't want to add fasting, but, um, right. But it's up to you. But I would, I don't know, I kind of feel like in the beginning, while you're still getting your feet under you, um, you know, I, I would, um, I would focus on the eating and make sure you get that part right. And you really, you know, learn that part. Um, because the weight loss is happening. You know, clearly, you're what from what you described. Um, so you're, you're on track, just kind of, you just got to be patient and let it continue. <laughs> that patient part. <laughs> well, you know, so I would recommend yeah. um, the ketogenic girl, Vanessa Spina, she has a, um, a YouTube channel and she put up a video um, maybe two or three weeks ago. And she was talking about when she first started carnivore, like two years ago, she was still like 34, 33% body fat, even though she's, you know, slender to look at. She's a very petite person. Um, and then she redid the DEXA scan, uh, you know, two and a half years later, and she's 20% body fat. So she lost a lot of body fat eating carnivore, not exercising because she was in school getting, I don't know, an advanced degree in um, some kind of nutrition science or whatever. So uh, she said, you know, by her own admission, she wasn't exercising. Um, and she lost a lot of body fat. I think her body only changed by eight pounds, maybe, I think she said. But, um, you know, going from 34% body fat to 20% body fat, I mean, that's a big, big difference. Um, so, you know, who knows what might have happened if she had pushed it and tried to do something different. But um, I think that is really helpful information to hear. Like, you know, it, it may not happen as fast as we want it to, but just think that the fast weight loss might be at the expense of our, our muscles, organs, and other, and other stuff. Um, oh, I think that you froze. So, um, oh, wait, there you are. Could you hear what I was saying? I think you froze. No. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not sure where you left off, but. Um, you were talking about the ketogenic girl the, right, right. and body fat. Yeah. So I think um, it might be helpful for you to take a look at her video. So she did a video talking about the change in her body composition from two years of carnivore. So she started out at about 34% body fat, and then she ended, um, you know, in the present at 20% body fat. And she had this measure, measured with a DEXA scan. So, um, and during that time, you know, she didn't do any extra exercise. She was getting an advanced degree. And, um, and so, you know, she was studying and super busy. So she really, you know, this really happened for her just by the diet, you know, and her body, um, you know, her weight changed only about eight pounds, I think she said. But um, obviously, 34% to 20% body fat is, that is a significant change, even if the scale is not changing as, as much as you want. Okay. Okay. 
I'll be patient. All right. <laughs> I gotta be patient. Gotta be patient. Yeah, but okay. I mean, not only patient, but celebrate your success. I mean, losing inches is ideal. That's what you want. Yes. So, yes. It, it, hey. it, it, I was very happy when I saw those beads fall to the <laughs> floor. I was like, what? <laughs> but okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, you know, what? one of the things I did during my journey was I took a photograph of myself every day. And over time, I had enough pictures that I could compare me in the same dress from, you know, six, like six weeks ago to the present. And so I started making these, um, you know, collage pictures where I could see the progress from week to week. So even when I wasn't seeing the scale necessarily come down, I could see wrinkles and puckers in the dress. I could see it was clearly getting looser. So right. that really helped me to visualize and remember. Because when I was losing my weight, I would lose weight one week and the next week I would lose zero. And then the next week I would lose 1.6 and then the next week zero and then 1.2 and then the next week zero. So on those zero weeks, I, I had to like, you know, I had to remind myself like, you know, I'm not, this is not failing. It's working. It's, I don't know why it's not on the scale, but I can see the pictures. Uh Oh, you froze again. <laughs> So, but anyway, for, for those of you watching, um, I do think it's important to have multiple layer, multiple types of measurement tools. There you are. You were frozen for a sec. So I was yeah. saying it's, I think it's really important to have multiple types of measurement tools and you've got your waist beads. Um, I've heard of people like tying a string around their waist, cutting it and taping it to the wall and then doing that, you know, every week. And over time, you're going to see the string get shorter. Um, right. That's another way of doing it visually. Having an outfit that you try on and you see it getting, you know, looser or you can like get those jeans up higher and higher. Like that's helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a sorry thing. I'm going to get me some things to use to help me. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Good point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to have to run to work, but um, I really, I'm very curious to see, you know, your continued progress and um, please just continue to update me. And if people have questions for you or who are, you know, right there with you and want to chat with you to get like, you know, moral support, um, how, how might people reach you or can you, do, do you want people to reach out to you? They can um, through the, through Instagram would be the best way to reach out to me. I've been trying to use it okay. more and more, trying to figure it out more and more. <laughs> so, yeah, through Instagram would be the best way. All right. Well, you might find that you're getting some direct messages. So, <laughs> that's great. It'll help me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, I mean, having peer support and having somebody else who's, you know, right there who's, you know, a month in or two months in that can be really helpful. So I would recommend that people, you know, have a chance to reach out to you. Um, and then, uh, oh, wait, Jane Rain says, how do you get through the nausea? That's been my greatest hurdle. Um, that's not a common symptom. So I would definitely want to hear more from you, Jane, about what's happening. Um, did you find that you had that cute lady, Claudette? I don't. I think the only time I'm really nauseous is if I have, like, if I try to eat too much. Mm -hmm. Like, if I eat something that I really, my body really just doesn't don't, doesn't want, mm -hmm. I will feel really nauseous mm -hmm. if, I, if, it, if I do that. But other than that, I haven't really had a nauseous feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've had it if I eat, try to eat too much fat. Um you know, and, and that's like a sign, hey, stop, <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we hit, hit our limit. But I think for some people who can't eat large volumes, it's hard to do uh, OMAD. So in concept, uh, eating one meal a day might work for some people. But if you can't consume all that much food at a time without feeling sick, then it's not going to work for you. So, you know, just have more meals, have smaller and more meals um, to get the fat that you need. All right, Claudette. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to run, but um, I would love to do this again and um, definitely reach back out and let me know how you're doing. I want to hear. Uh, I'm really excited to see how many more inches are going to fall off without the scale moving. 
<laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. out. I'm going to start trying to figure out the inches part. Okay. All right. Good. Um, I'm glad to hear it. Well, All right. Uh -huh. So much. I appreciate you. Thank you for talking to me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I, you know, I'm happy to. I want to see more of our people get on this way of eating because I think it is so healing and um, it's, it's really very beneficial for us. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, bye-bye.